Hello everyone and welcome to this new part on feature engineering and what we would like to study in this part is the data-driven way of identifying features and in particular a way how to use uh, find from data or use linear techniques to find a linear transformation of my input in order to have features that are really meaningful. And what we will see is that basically from a numeric perspective there is nothing new. This will rely on the singular value decomposition but just to give you you know, an overview how these features can be used in the end. All right, so what's the idea? We want to have these linear features, so given our data, right, we have this data matrix Z, the task is to find a linear transformation from the data itself, not use a dictionary and define a, a, a standard basis like Fourier modes or polynomials. Find a basis or a linear transformation from the data, okay? So what does this mean? That our Psi of Z in the end becomes simply a projection on a subspace spanned by the columns of u, okay? So we take a, a linear uh, or a set of linearly independent vectors which we arrange in this matrix and then we project the input z onto these columns. And this is um, or onto these basis vectors and these will give us the coefficients and these are our features in the end, okay? Or maybe the, the, the u's are the features, but we can express the meaning or the, the importance of the features in our input by, by using this projection operation, okay? And so what is u really? u is a basis for a linear subspace. Well, let's say if you take sufficiently many it's just a basis transform but if you take fewer then you know the d uh, or, or q, sorry this was q fewer than the q basis functions that you have in in, in z then it's a subspace you know we have we lose some sort of information but hopefully not too much and so it's a linear subspace in which And now this is important, most of, but this is again, only if we take a subspace, the data lives. Okay, so we have this subspace. Um, and so if we go to this Psi and put it in a bit more detail, then what we will get is we get that this Psi of Z really is again a dictionary, just in the, as, as we had it before, but now the dictionary is identified from data. So it's a set of linear functions or linear transformations, the, these projection operations, onto the R functions that we have in our matrix Z. Okay? And so the example that we can use and that I will also use in the code in a second is to use the singular value decomposition to identify these features. Okay, so example is to take one, the singular value decomposition, right, and then you take the first R columns of your U matrix. U, now this was the R, right? This is a general basis, doesn't matter from which method I picked it, this is the UR from the, uh, the SVD. Remember, this was a decomposition in a S matrix, a sigma matrix, and a V matrix. And the U, this contained the left singular vectors, and these form an orthonormal basis of dimension R. And what we also found, um, you can check out the SVD video once more if you're uncertain, was that the leading vectors span 
the most important features because they contain the maximum very or information in terms of an R dimensional basis. So it's the optimal basis in dimension R for a given data set. And then you can use this. Um, one comment maybe, this is also known as the proper orthogonal decomposition. Right, or POD. So if you ever heard the name POD, you get basically the, the, the message that you need to use the SVD to compute it. And this means because it's an orthogonal decomposition means the columns of U are piecewise orthogonal. And so it's a decomposition in orthogonal vectors. And uh, so the proper orthogonal decomposition is a singular value decomposition that gives you the main basis vectors. You could also think of other bases um, that are not necessarily optimal or orthogonal then, uh, or optimal in terms of, of the, the content of, of information, but still may possess some other sort of meaning. So we have seen the dynamic mode decomposition, right? So what you can do is you can use your DMD modes, so basically the eigenvectors of your A matrix that you identify from data, and use the features or so the projection onto these DMD modes as your features. Okay. So this is already it. Um, let's check out a little bit of code. And what I'm going to use here is a very well-known example. This is, follows very closely the great book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering from Steve Brunton and Nathan Kutz, where they also composed this example. And it's not a dynamic example, but it is very you know, helpful in terms of expressing wh what's going on. And then I will get to a dynamics example as the second one. So what we have here is a data set that consists of a bunch of faces, okay? So these are more than two people, there's quite a few people of them, and then for every person, we have multiple shots. So you see that every pixel or image consists of 32,000 pixels roughly, and I have 2,400 images. So it's a library of many people, 40 to 50, I'm actually, I'm not certain, and then multiple shots of each person to give you more information under different lighting conditions. So you see, I've randomly picked two people out of this library and you see, you know, same face, different lighting conditions. And so this is now our large data matrix. So it's 32,000 dimensional. This is, you know, the pixel information. And then I have 2,400 columns for the 200,400 photos that I've flattened into very, very long vectors. And so every column contains the pixel values, which are black and white values. I've only colored them here to, you know, make it visible on, on the black screen. Um, so this is how the data looks. And what we're doing now is, in terms of, of feature identification, is we use a singular value decomposition on this large matrix. And so the code is, as you know, is very, very simple. The Z matrix contains all the images column-wise. And what I'm getting now is this SVD matrix. So this is already the economy version, which means I only store as many columns in U as I really need for an exact reconstruction. So I have 2,400 basis vectors, I have 2,400 associated singular vectors in this diagonal sigma matrix, and then the V matrix is for reconstructing each image um, out of the basis functions. All right, and so what you can do is you can plot this and see that if we plot the singular values, that you see that they decay very quickly. So this is a logarithmic scale, meaning that the first few modes, uh, very to the very left here, are much, much more meaningful than everything that comes later on. And so this gives us the hope that I can identify my U vector using only the first few leading of these, these vectors, right? And so I get meaningful features that I can use for reconstruction or then for learning in the end, let's say. Okay, but learning will not play a role here. This is just about the features themselves. So what I'm doing here is I'm plotting the first uh, 16 of these columns. And in the book that I just mentioned, they are called eigenfaces because, you know, they're sort of eigenvectors or the singular vectors of this data set. But they show you faces because it's facial data. Okay, so I've taken this vector and then out of the flattened vector, I reshape it again into a picture. So every picture here is basically a very, very large vector. And so what you see is these features really carry meaning, right? So you see clearly a face is visible. Apparently the eyes and, and mouth region and nose region are very, very important features for people and you know, 
we all share these features, right? So they, they show up in a meaningful way. Actually, the first one is the mean over all images. And then you see, apparently, the second image uh, takes care of the lighting conditions that differ in, in the photos that were taken, right? So again, a feature that we can interpret. And then the further you go down, you see that there are more distinct features distinguishing one person maybe from the other. So, so the, the eye region um, or the mouth region is, is very important to distinguishing one person from another. And so if we go on, then you see, you know, the eyebrows apparently are important and so on. So we see that these features are really, in a sense, interpretable, right? We have identified them from data. They're not general like polynomials. They're tailored to our data set. But linear models or linear transformations often carry this sort of meaning. And so you see this very, very well interpretable. And what you can do in terms of learning, for instance, let's just try to, uh, first of all, what you see, the reconstruction quality. So if I pick only the first 10 columns of my U matrix and reconstruct the face from these 10 features. So I'm projecting my input image, the original one here, onto my 10 dimensional space. I get these 10 feature uh, coefficients. And then I go back and you know multiply them with the columns to reconstruct the image. And you see that already with a very small number of modes, I get a very, very accurate reconstruction of the original image. And if I now compare two people, right, this is the, the two, well, they have different numbers than I gave them here, person A and person B are these, and try to compare them, all I need to do is I take these coefficients, so I'm projecting my input onto my POD basis of now arbitrary length, right? So, so all 2,400, but I'm only going to compare them with respect to two. So you see this formula is exactly what I've implemented here for A1 and A2. Right, so the indices 1 refer to person A, indices 2 refer to person B. And so this is really psi of person A and psi of person B, these A1 and A2. And if I plot them now, you can actually see that these features carry meaning because apparently person B and person A have different features in terms of these fifth and sixth mode. Um, yes. And so you see, this is really, really cool to, to see that these features, even though they are linear, help us to, you know, really learn something and allow us to find linear relations in otherwise, you know, very complicated data sets such as images. And to conclude this uh, video, we are going to talk a little bit about dynamics once more and consider this also a very popular example of this vortex shedding example, right, where you have fluid entering from the left, hitting the cylinder, and then moving on to the right, and it exhibits this oscillating behavior, right? So the code will create a video that you can see the animation, but so basically it's a, it's a fluttering behavior over time that is really, really interesting and, and, and occurs in many situations also if cloud patterns hit islands, for instance. So we have these, and again, you can do the SVD. Excuse me. Yes. Um, these are the singular values, and you see again, there's this hierarchy of of importance, let's say, how dominant these individual modes will be or important in terms of reconstruction. And we can now plot the leading ones to look what this the system looks like in terms of their its features. And so the first one is the mean flow, no dynamics. And the second and third are equally important. And these form the large scale vortices if I if I you know add them up. And then go moving down this energy cascade, so that the value of the singular values you see that the features become smaller and smaller and add more intricate dynamics. And so, you know, out of these six already, you can reconstruct the, the vortex shedding behavior really, really well. Okay, so I think this gives you a nice introduction to linear feature identification from data. And of course, you can also go the nonlinear route, and this is what we're going to explore in the upcoming videos. Thank you.